And joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome him. He's written really an interesting, fascinating book uh, about something that happened to him and uh, it really has to deal a lot with uh, uh, financials, greed, Wall Street, and we're going to find out about it. It's called The Ponzi Princess, a memoir. We're joined today by uh, Mark Morwitz from out in San Francisco today. And uh, Mark, good to talk with you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, good to have a chance to chat with you for a couple of minutes. I had an opportunity to, uh, t- to read through the book. And uh, first of all, this is something that happened to you. I, I imagine... Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it's cathartic for you to, to write a story like this, but boy, what a, what, a, what a story you went through here. Definitely. I mean, the, the book is about my relationship with Laurie Schneider, who is a Long Island con artist who was uh, arrested and convicted of running a Ponzi scheme um, and, and using wire fraud to do that, and she's just serving time in federal prison. And yes, writing the book was cathartic and helped me see where my responsibilities were and what I did wrong, and then, you know, and seeing her the full breadth of what um, she did and how sociopathic she is. I think we're all familiar with the, you know, the Bernie Madoff story, it's very similar to uh, what you went through uh, on, on an individual scale as opposed to, you know, he, he conned so many. I know uh, Laurie Schneider as well, but she, uh, now last I heard, I think recently, uh, she just went to jail, is that right? Uh, within the last yes, month or two? Uh, yes, and just to back up for your listeners, the, this, the book describes um, a very different kind of crime than what something like Madoff did. Um, Madoff and many of the Ponzi schemers that we've heard about in the news over the past years were more of a Wall Street kind of financial system schemers. Uh, Laurie right. Schneider um, reached us, many of us who were kind of Main Street people by um, claiming to have deals with the Brooklyn Docks to, to buy unclaimed toilet paper and paper goods for under wholesale and then selling them to wholesalers and flipping houses that were almost foreclosed and things that were very practical and real. And so people like me, who doesn't have a financial background, could relate to that. So just to give a sense of it wasn't some pie-in-the-sky financial thing where we were handing someone money and hoping that the investments just give us return. It was something very concrete. She would drive us to a house and say, I'm going to buy that house next week. I need money for that house. And then I would give her money for the house through my family and friends. And then she would come back weeks later and say, I bought the house. I'm flipping it. I'm renovating it. And it was that kind of scheme. And what's amazing when you read stories like this, uh, uh, you know, from from con artists, that they're obviously very good at uh, becoming friends with you because so many people, you know, succumb to them. But I guess she must be the same way, or was the same way. Seemed very honest to you the first time you met her, right? Yes, um, I I wouldn't say that she seemed honest. I mean, she's a character, and I would say um, if anyone knows who Auntie Mame is or sure. Snooky. Um, she's, you know, she's this kind of charismatic, kind of wacky, quirky person who lives life on her own terms. So I wouldn't say that I would have given her my deepest, darkest secrets to keep, but she was somebody who seemed to be incredibly savvy in terms of business. She was very caring. Um, she, uh, I knew her for, through friends um, who were neighbors, and over time she and I did become close, or I thought we did. And um, she did things like come drive eight hours to my father's funeral in Virginia, bringing me my favorite baked goods and stepping beside me at my father's grave when I was by myself and crying and putting her hand on my shoulder, um, helping me buy my mother a condo when she knew my mother was in dire straits. I mean, those things, you know, to the average person um, show a caring and friendship. And so, yes, she was a mastermind at manipulating all of us in that way. Yeah, I grew up in, in Long Island, and uh, I've seen people like her, and not necessarily, I knew they were con artists, but, you know, that kind of character that you, that you describe about her in the book. Uh, flamboyant, uh, you know, quirky, uh, uh, interesting business, uh, you know, practices, but uh, I kind of I kind of drift from what you described in the book. I, I've seen people like that, so uh, <laughs> I guess it's easy to kind of, you know, fall, uh, trust, to, trust in them, right? I mean, you, you feel they're not going to take advantage of you. Yes, well, yes, yes is the answer to that question, and I'd like to say that she, after knowing me for maybe a few months, she offered me a job in one of her, um, she had several companies, and one, uh, two were legitimate, even though they were shell companies, they were actually doing real business, and one was an entertainment company that provided um, planning for corporate events and weddings and bands and um, amusements and that kind of thing, and my mother was a caterer when I was growing up, and even though I'm a social worker and hadn't worked in that field since I was young, I had a lot of savvy and um, good ideas for her. So I worked in that business with her, and I was in her office 
And not only did I, you know, as a friend, did I think that she wouldn't hurt me and I trusted her, but I was in the office and she showed me, you know, fake invoices. She'd have fake meetings with people who were real businessmen or businesswomen, and she would lie about the context. She had other employees lie about what she was doing. It was a very specific and malicious cover-up. So it wasn't just someone telling me that she was going to be investing money. I was in the office daily seeing that she was supposedly doing these kinds of things. And, and you invested large sums of money. I mean, I guess it started out relatively small, but escalated quickly, right? Yes. Well, I, I didn't have a lot of money because I am a social worker and was working in public health, but mm -hmm. I started with the $20,000 investment, um, got a small return of about $2,500, and that snowballed, and I began to invest, you know, again and again. And at some point, I was able to buy my mother a condo with, uh, you know, with her help because she had given me some special deals so I could make more money. And then my family and friends noticed that I had money for the first time, and they started asking what was going on. And soon I had, well, within a year, I had 45 of my closest family and friends investing um, $2 million with her, which is a huge sum for us because we're very middle class, and that's where the bulk of our losses came from. How long into uh, knowing her, the, your, your working with her and, and all that, did, did you get a, an early sense maybe this is something not right here, even though you, you may have continued for a while after that, that you know, the, the red flag started to come on? How, how long did that uh, take before that happened? Yes, um, the book describes my process, which, you know, as I was writing it was, was difficult to see. Um, I didn't see it, and the people around me didn't see it. Um, but my intuition was very strong. And about two years into knowing her and making money and having all my friends and family and business associates making money, I started not being able to sleep at night. And I, I would have kind of this anger with her um, that kept me from sleeping. And I had no way to, I didn't know what that was. And so it was only after the fact that I realized, you know, I was telling myself to pay attention more and just not, not listen to her lies. But there was no sign, honestly, that her business practices were illegal or she was not doing what she said she was doing, even though we knew she was kind of a zany person. Yeah, we don't go into the whole story now. Let the folks read about it. But uh, this eventually led to you, uh, uh, once you found out what was going on, uh, a court case and, and all that. But uh, you went through some uh, you know, personal struggles as well, which uh, thankfully you've come through OK. Uh, uh, how, how do you think you, you found the strength to do that? Uh, a lot of people wouldn't be able to come through that. Well, um, in the book, I, I, I talk about how um, she actually sat me down um, and told me that some of the deals were fake, uh, which I appreciate because I think she told no one else any truth. And um, from that moment on, I had to figure out my own path with, you know, my, um, I had a, a father-in-law who was a, an attorney and he helped me to figure out what I needed to do. So I took a month to, to fact find after I discovered that some of these deals were fake and then had to tell 45 of my family and friends that all their money was gone. And in that moment of deciding to tell my family and friends, there was some strength that came out in me um, that kept me kind of solid for a couple of years. Yeah. And then at some point after I had gone to the FBI and had been kind of doing, doing everything on my own, um, I decided that I might cash in a life insurance policy to pay my family back, which meant that I was going to kill myself. Right. And it, that didn't come from a sense of depression. It was just desperation to try to make the situation right. And honestly, and the book tells a story, it was, it was luck. I mean, I gave my life up to luck, and I found a job that paid me enough that I could support myself and my mother, who I was, um, who I was supporting the whole time. And from that, um, I'm still here. But to be honest, the strength came from wanting to take care of my family, and um, it didn't come from my concern for myself. And I, I would never do that again, but the book kind of lays out the steps of how, um, how the story unfolds, where I, my whole heart was just into taking care of my family in every way I could. Yeah, a great, great uh, descriptive uh, language you use in the book because uh, I think people are going to you know, really get uh, involved with uh, with your story. And I, I guess part of the, way, well, the reason you wrote it is obviously warn other people, uh, maybe finding similar people that come across their lives not to uh, not to trust them right away or make sure you know what you're doing. And I understand part of the proceeds are going to go to help other people too, so that's a nice thing. Yes, uh, and actually because there was no trial, the um, Schneider pled guilty after four years of haggling with the, um, federal the federal government, there was no chance to air all of the malicious lies and schemes that she was involved in. And so I wrote the book really to make sure that the truth was known about her because just the fact she was um, she pled guilty and is now serving time doesn't necessarily tell the whole world the, the full story. So I wrote the book not only to warn people like you're saying in general, but to warn the people in her life when she gets out of prison so that 
I can send the book to whoever needs to know, and they can read it for themselves, um, so that no one else can be taken by the Ponzi yeah. Princess. Very right. good, good, uh, good to have that happen as well. But uh, we've been talking with Mark Moore. What's the name of the book? Is the Ponzi Princess a memoir? And give out a website, Mark. People get a hold of the book. Sure. Well, it's on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com, and my website is MarkMorowitz.com, which is M-A-R-K-M-O-R-E-W-I-T-Z.com. Great. Mark, pleasure talking to you. I know it was a tough thing to do, but uh, you came through it okay, and, uh, and you're doing good by, uh, by uh, getting the word out, and hopefully it'll help some other, I'm sure it will help other people avoid what you went through. Thank you so much for having me on and, and, and discussing the book. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.